Hi everyone, this is Carol Keller, Independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you from Illinois in the United States as part of our global vlog hop. And it is my pleasure today to introduce you to the Flower and Field Designer Series papers. Here they are, 12 different papers, two-sided, and these beautiful flower designs with the black background, so very elegant. And so this is what we're gonna be working with today. When I was deciding which papers to use for my project today, this one really called out to me first. It really spoke to me of Valentine's Day and the other side of it, which is this one with the stripes. I thought they would pair together nicely, so that's what we will be using today. So let me just move the papers out of the way and give you a preview of the project that we will be making together. I really love scrapbooking and I love using the 12 by 12 papers. So this was the page that I designed and I'm gonna walk you through how to make it using actually several of the papers in that flower and field designer series paper pack. So as I usually do, I began with just a piece of whisper white cardstock, 12 by 12, and a sheet of that pretty flower paper that I said reminded me of Valentine's Day with the stripes on the other side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just cut a slice off and then flip it around and turn it over. So I'm just cutting off a two and a half inch strip and then we're gonna flip it over and glue it down. It's best to use the multi-purpose liquid glue as it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and time to position it before it dries because you want to make sure that you have it right at the edges of your paper. So I'll just line it up. That looks good. And now we will add our strip, our coordinating strip, and lay it right alongside it. Whoops. That looks good, and there's gonna be a strip in the middle, so if for some reason you measured incorrectly, you could leave a little bit of a gap because there's gonna be a solid cardstock strip to cover that up. And that strip is a half inch wide cherry cobbler, and I'm actually using a scrap. This should be 12 inches by one half inch. But for me, I, um, I'm using a scrap, and I know there's gonna be a title over there, so I'm actually gonna snip this down and use a piece at the top. So you could do this strip next if you're using a full 12 by 12. But if you're not, then like me, we're gonna work on the title first. So we're just gonna take our stamp and seal and layer the two strips. Now that we have our two layers for our title, I'm going to lay out the letters for the Happy Valentine's Day that I cut out using the Playful Alphabet dies. And I recommend positioning the two end words first, so Happy and Day, and then you can center Valentine in the middle, Valentine's in the middle. So keep that in mind when you are doing your placement. And the other thing that I did was before I ran the cardstock through the die cutting machine, my wonderful stamp and cut and emboss. I put adhesive back sheets on the back of the cardstock. So all I have to do is peel the paper off and they will stick. So it's a lot le less messy than using multi-purpose liquid glue or something like that. So I will be back as soon as I have laid out the letters and I will show you how to attach them. All right. So what I've done is adhere almost all of the letters, like I said, starting with the word happy and then followed by day and then doing Valentine's last so that I can be sure um, it is centered and there's equal spacing between the words. And then once I'm happy with the placement, I will simply just press down on the letters. And to show you um, what the procedure was that I did, I saved the S. And like I said, there's adhesive on the back and this actually has just a little bit of, tiny bit of space where it wasn't, it, there was no adhesive on the back. So I can either peel it up with my finger or better yet use my take your pick tool and just lift it off. I'm gonna place that last letter. 
And then once I am happy with the placement, I'd say that looks pretty good with a, the letters are fairly straight. With some good spacing between them. Maybe move that T down a little bit. And then, like I said, once I'm happy with the placement, I'm just going to press them all down. So you can play with them. The adhesive allows you a little bit of give, which is nice. And then you simply press them so that all of the adhesive attaches to your cardstock. And there we have our title. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the little strip. And like I said, mine is a little bit shorter. I'm cheating and using a um, scrap from an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So it is not 12 inches long, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be hiding it underneath the title. So I'm going to actually adhere my title because I think that will make it easier. And to do that, I'm just going to put down some strips with my stamp and seal and lay that out where I would like it. Leaving a little bit of a border all the way around the top and the sides, about an equal border. And that leaves me room underneath here to slip the little ends of this into place. So I know I just need a tiny strip at the top. And again, if it's easier, cut yourself a 12 inch strip and solve the problem but I just decided to use my scrap to make sure, yep, it goes this way. So I'm just gonna place it up there with a little bit of stamp and seal on that. And I'm just gonna slip it underneath here. So if you do have eight and a half by 11 only, it will work and this is the way to do it. And if you have 12 by 12, then obviously you would use that. And I'm going to lay some more adhesive for the long piece and align it from the bottom and line it up with what's already down there. So I'm not going to press that till I'm happy that it's in place. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to sneak it under there, straighten it out, and no one will be the wiser. So that's how you can make it work with just an 11 inch piece of cardstock. Again, nobody will be the wiser. So now it's time for some embellishments. And what I did was take several of the papers and do some fussy cutting. I liked the red here, the little red flowers here and here. I thought a grouping of three would be good. And then the flirty flamingo flowers here and I there are different on this sheet there are different numbers of flowers in the different groupings they're not all the same so I picked ones that had about seven flowers like this section or this one and those two are the same as each other but I also did some from the middle like this one's a little different but about seven flowers and I did do some fussy cutting which I have done already so I'm gonna bring those out to show you and all I did was just line them I think I'm going to use that one for a, a photo and all I did was just place them in the border and those again I attached with some stamp and seal and they're about equally spaced so there is a little bit of embellishment for our border and then I cut some mats four by four and a half inches and I laid them out on the uh, flowered part of the page and kind of equally spaced them. I think that looks pretty good. And I purposely tilted this one just to give it a little interest. Otherwise, it's very kind of square and a little bit boring. And I'm going to adhere those. And I should tell you that the colors that I used, both for the letters and for the mats, 
I used Flirty Flamingo for the happy and one mat. I used Cherry Cobbler for the word Valentine's and one mat. And I used Poppy Parade for day and the one mat. And then this and this mat are Petal Pink. And I did that because those are the colors that coordinate in the actual paper. Flirty Flamingo here and then the other colors are all in the other side of the background paper. And even when I took the other flowers that I fussy cut, I wanted to do it so that they coordinated. So almost, well, really the only other color besides what's here is the background here, which I think might be Bermuda Bay. And so that's it. Our page is almost complete. And again, I fussy cut three more of the flowers to use as embellishments. Um, on the page by the photos. So I basically laid them out this way. And then we'll put those down as well. And I purposely changed them up so that they were not near their partners on the border. And then we are almost done with the page. I think we'll do it like this. And I did it so that Normally, of course, if I were doing a scrapbook page, I would have the pictures all ready, the photographs all ready. But in this case, since I don't, I purposely put them along the edge, which I think I would do anyway, but I should be able to slip them underneath because I'm just going to want a small mat, maybe a quarter of an inch around here or half a centimeter. So there's room to slip those photos right underneath. All right, and last but not least, I am using the resin hearts for just a little bit more bling, a little bit of an embellishment on our title. So I'm going to use your, my take your pick tool to grab and I purposely on this one kind of place them um, at an angles just sort of going almost along with how they are on the on the sheet. One that's a little more upright down here and of course we did our rule of three. three on each side between the words and you don't have to do this but I think it adds just a little bit more to make it a little bit more finished down here and we'll angle it the other way and there we have it there is our completed scrapbook page using our wonderful new flower and field designer series paper that again you can earn for free with a qualifying order. Thanks so much for joining me today on our global vlog hop. Have a wonderful celebration and if you're interested in anything please contact your demonstrator. Have a great day everyone. Bye bye.